Once again, we thank our sponsors who help us put this show on the air, the Comfort Inn of downtown Denver, with their fabulous location, stunning atmosphere, and free breakfast. Their special Metro State rate of $79 is hard to beat. And of course, Dex. Dex is your most complete, up-to-date source for information in the book and online at DexKnows.com. Thanks for sticking around on the Roadrunner Review. In this segment, we'll look back on the baseball and tennis seasons. On the diamond, our Roadrunners began the season with a new head coach for the third time in four seasons. Tom Carcione manned the charge for the 2010 campaign. He led the team all the way to the conference tournament in Kearney, Nebraska. The tennis teams were led by second year head coach Beck Mears and both earned invites to the postseason conference tournaments. So as you can see, we're still here with Mark and Todd. And fellas, we'll start off with baseball and Todd. A part of the success we saw for the baseball team came from a superb performance from an athlete early on. That's right, Eric, and that athlete is David Fox having a 19-game hitting streak. And we all know in baseball, hitting streaks are hard to come by, but you know he, 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 will, he willed his way in 19-game um, hitting streak. At his batting average during that streak was 541. And David Fox will be back for his senior season, so it should be exciting to see where he does. Uh, and also, when someone has a hit streak, it's kind of contagious. And we kind of saw that. I know we were in Pueblo for the basketball tournament, but still in downtown Denver, they had an offensive explosion that was just incredible. We were down in Pueblo for the RMAC tournament, but we had our computer up looking at live stats. And after every inning, we were going, wow, they're up 9-1. to one. Wow, they're up 17-2. to two. That was the Metro CCU game. They ended up scoring 34 runs, set multiple school records, hits, bases, and doubles. It was a phenomenal performance, especially coming because their last game, they had set a dubious school record by allowing Mesa State to score 33 runs. And you guys mentioned a couple of the year's highlights, and the team also went to the RMAC tournament. You know, they took New Mexico Highlands to overtime. Uh, they lost to Mesa State in the first game. And so Tom Carcione really has the team headed in the right direction. Hopefully he sticks around because it's always okay. important to be able to keep the offensive set the same every year. If you're changing it, it's hard to find one that works with every team, rhythm and chemistry and all that stuff plays a factor as well. And now we'll move on kind of to the tennis teams. Uh, and, and Todd, you know, you saw, you were, one, I guess you're the tennis aficionado. You went to more games than I think <laughs> both of us did on the year. And so what stood out for you with the tennis team this year? Well, coming into this season, definitely with Sasha Ruckelhausen leaving, you know, he was Metro's probably one of Metro's best tennis players you know in school history so obviously him leaving you know who was going to pick up the slack now everybody thought Scott Bradley was going to you know pick up that slack because he he was kind of staying up with par with um, with uh, Sasha Ruckelhausen last year but obviously after five or six games he went down with a back injury and that kind of sidelined him for the rest of the season and back injuries are just you know especially in tennis because you have to because tennis, tennis demands so much of your body. And if your back, if your back goes out, it's kind of hard to get that range of motion you know, in there. So obviously, I, Bradley going down, who was going to step up? And that player was Georgie Perez. He was the number two singles player. And he stepped up to the challenge going eight and five. And so we have one more segment to go. You guys have it in you for one more? Let's do it. It'll be fun. All right, when we come back, we're actually going to have a fall season preview, per se, a quick one. And we'll have the top plays of the season brought to you by these three guys right here. So don't go anywhere. This season are brought to you by Miller Coors. Todd, you got number five. We now look ahead to the fall season. And Mark, what does the women's soccer team have in store for us in the fall? Well, the women's soccer team is going to miss the likes of Becca Mays and Becca Maloney. That's going to put a huge stress on Adrian Almaraz's midfield and defense because they're going to have to pick up the scoring. Plus, with Becca Maloney, she was in net 96% of the time. That's going to have a huge position at the goalkeeper. It'll be interesting to see if they can rematch what they did last year going to the Sweet 16. Absolutely. Love to see the Armic tournament back here. On Denver, in Denver. So, Todd, on the men's side of things, what can we expect? Well, Eric, we Metro Metro has great talent coming back. Coach Parsons always has great, always has the team playing at, uh, really well. And Stephen Emery, RMAC Player of the Year, coming back. When you have when you have RMAC Player of the Year coming back, you know next season is just going to be just as good as it was last season. And I know you mentioned the hat trick, but you also had four assist game later that year as well. So he definitely deserved that. And guys. 
Thanks for leaving volleyball with me. It's one of my favorite <laughs> sports. Our Roadrunners will look to defend their RMAC Tournament Championship that they got in the fall. And of course, we have Debbie Hendricks coming back at the controls. The front line will be stacked as they will bring back Bree Morley on the outside. Also, Emily Greenhall is coming back for her sophomore campaign. And of course, the middle is stacked with Lisa Jones and Anna Mapes. So I'm really excited to see what this team can do. I mean, we will miss Amy Watanabe and so forth, but it'll be great to see what volleyball can do in the fall. Mm -hmm. And so now, the top plays, you guys ready to roll? Let's, Let's go for it. All right, so here we go. The top plays of the spring season are brought to you by Miller Coors. Todd, you got number five. Play number five comes from the Outdoor Championships where Anthony Luna brought home the RMAC title in the 800 meters. All right, nice one, Todd. Mark, you're up. Number four is the Jasmine Cervantes in the RMAC shootout. First round versus Colorado School of Mines puts Metro State up for the first time. A minute left. They went on for the upset of Mines. Very good, very good. You guys are good at this, Todd. At number three, we have Reggie Evans, the super sophomore, with a breakaway one-handed dunk against South Dakota Mines. Very good, Mark. Number two is all you. Number two is one of the best plays I've ever seen in person. Molly Clark robbing Mesa State of a three-run homer. Metro would go on to win the RMAC tournament title. Now that's a tough one to beat, but we do have one for the top play of the spring semester. Number one, Janessa Tassone crushes the walk-off home run versus Wayne State in the Super Regionals. It was a 1-0 game, and she wins it with one swing of the bat, and then the momentum shifted in Metro's favor all the way to the College World Series. Those are your top plays of the spring season, and they're brought to you by Miller Coors. And Miller Coors wants everyone to remember to drink responsibly. So that does it for this month's Roadrunner Review, and in fact, it's the last one of the season. We'll be back in the, for the September show to preview the fall sports seasons. We gotta thank Mark Babish, Todd Diamond, thanks for helping us out. Also, Cora Camp, Rafi Sampson out in the back. And guys, you wanna help me out with the finish here? Sure. Don't forget to tune in next month for more high-flying Metro State action. Thank you for joining us on the Roadrunner Review. I'm Eric Lansing. I'm Eric Lansing. I can't say that. <laughs>